I think we are. We are. Hi, Abby. Hi, Sophie. Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hi. How nice to see you. Not to see you all, but to imagine you listening to us, right? Yes. Yeah, I always feel that, too. I, like, feel this little circle around us here with us, which yeah. I love. Yeah. Yep. And sorry, okay, I'm looking Abby. down, everyone. I'm just getting on to Facebook so that I can see if you have any comments or questions underneath. Abby, you look ravishing. Oh, thank you, Sophie. So do you. I love your haircut. It's so beautiful. Uh, so, Abby, what, what is the question today? So the question today is, why do you say that we are shifting from the five senses to the spiritual? All right. Very good. All right. So I read uh, this book, Abby, right? So there is two, or I'm sure there is much more than two, but there is two... Um, uh, how do you say theory right the first one is that when we started to plant wheat instead of being hunter gatherers um, ownership arose mm -hmm. and this ownership you now had a field you had to keep it from others it was yours you had to water it weed it right then then the survival shifted from physical to ontological mm -hmm. But there is another theory that is based on the scriptures and on the philosophies of many, many religions and philosophies that says that, you know, but I, I'm going to use Christianity because it's easier, right? You know, in yeah. Christianity, they say the fall from the Garden of Eden is when Eve ate the apple. Mm. Well, obviously, at that time, they needed allegories and images so that people could understand, right? Obviously, there is no eating the apple. But in the many, many, many different disciplines, including philosophy, Plato talked about it, mm. many philosophers, they said that there was a time where human beings were innocent. Mm really innocent in total innocence in in what is known as the garden of eden and even the weather where clement was clement it, there was no uh, violence no harshness nothing wow. to survive right wow. so interesting remind, yes remind me of that because okay. i have a point about that right and then the equivalent of the eating the apple is a shift into consciousness, right? So we are the only species in the universe that are aware, and we are aware that we are aware. Mm -hmm. right? It's a self-reflective phenomena. Like a dog is aware, a dog is not going to walk into a wall. Right, exactly. But the dog is not aware that he's aware. Right, yes. This self-reflective awareness allows us has allowed us all the progress, the medicine, the technology, the, the progress, right? Because yep. we constantly question and invent and, and, right? Yes. So um, there is so much about it. I, I didn't even know there was that much about it. I, I like the idea, you know, the, yeah. that it's a shift into consciousness that created the survival yes and that but, before we were all innocent yeah go ahead so i'm just clarifying what you're saying for myself so what you're saying is is that at some point in history humans were like dogs innocent and aware but not aware of being aware they were just living on earth um yes. as any other being would and yes. then at some point there was a shift um into being aware of being aware and that's when everything shifted for humanity yes including weather wow the fear uh, all the emotions wow and what is fascinating for me is that you know i always say you always reap what you sow you always reap what you sow right it's my mantra and it seems that we this shift that might have been caused by fear or had fear arrived has also influenced the mm. whole of the environment we live inside of. Wow. So we are the source of it all. 
You know, that makes perfect sense to me, actually, because if we're all divine and divine is everything, then everything would have to reflect everything else. Actually, yesterday I picked up the Bhagavad Gita, which I haven't read in, I don't know, 10 years. And I just happened to flip it open. If you haven't read the Bhagavad Gita, it doesn't matter what religion or spirituality you are. It is such a deep and beautiful spiritual text, but I just happened to open to the part where, um, I'll call him the divine in this instance, the divine is speaking to Arjuna and saying, I am this, I am that I am this, I am that. And it goes on for maybe five or six pages of God speaking to Arjuna saying, I am everything from this tiny bug to the wheel of your cart to the weather. So if that is true, if we are, if divine is everything manifested, then of course, you know, our, our shift into consciousness would affect the weather and anything else, right? Anything else, right? So amazing. So, so if we stand there, Mm. that we really are the source we always get what we say right it's a yeah. the source of it all and if we go to fear and if we don't now that we have awareness if we don't get aware of being identified with fear or anger or mm. violence right mm. then we create a world that is a reflection of it mm. Wow. But it's it's mind blowing because at that level you even think the climate crisis hunger yeah. is all our creation. Wow, it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, right. Which is for me a fantastic news because it is the possibility of recapturing the innocence and the love and the altruism and the compassion <laughs> and the generosity and the care with awareness. Yeah. Not as a baby, you know, baby are innocent, but as a full ground, grown aware adult. Oh. Because we now have the choice. So the question is, why do we say that the rain, this rain, that's called the ego, right? Mm -hmm. That you believe that it's when we ate the apple or it's, uh, I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay. Please. Yeah. please. <laughs> Please, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, uh, either you believe it's a fall into consciousness or it's the rise of ownership mm. doesn't quite matter because what we have to deal with is right now but mm. right now we have why i say it's the end is that everything is totally unworkable mm -hmm. yes right? Yeah, it is, everything is unworkable. You you cannot. We cannot tolerate, but not tolerate as an outright or we literally. The the distortion of the speeding frenzy on the external world being other people, money, um, domination, ownership yes. uh, is it, is is now. Um, as everybody can see, if you listen to the news, um, creating such a chaos yeah. and so yeah. much suffering. It is not possible to not have a repartition of the wealth. It is not possible that everybody in the world doesn't have a home, a roof over their head and enough to eat. It is, yeah. it, it is, it, in 2022, with all the progress we have, mm. I feel it down to myself. I don't know how to even express it. It is not possible to have people dying on boats because they're escaping a war and we don't want to open our frontiers. It, it Like 850 little children died in Ukraine. You know, I had a conversation. You know how people always want to say, but it's not the Russians' fault. It's a Western fault. And America is playing. And Ukraine did that 50 years ago and 200 years ago. I mean, you nobody is ever right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It is never right and wrong. It doesn't exist. We are one, we are interrelated. That is not the point. The point yeah, is not who point. is right and wrong, who yeah. is good or bad. Yeah. The point is violence is not acceptable. 
That's it. Who cares about that. who is right and wrong? I love that. And something I love about what you're saying too is that it's like stepping into the present moment completely, which you've talked about, and just seeing what's happening. It, it's almost like people are trying to say two plus two is 150. Like it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up at this point in our evolution of humanity that we would have people dying on the street, people dying, children dying in wars, hungry humans living in and, the cold. And no. that we, we, we call powerful people, the people that have a lot of money and a lot of political sway and a lot of the, the, no, that's not power. That's that is not power. Power is people that have a high level of awareness, are contributing to others, and are um, making a difference in life. Those are the people I respect. Those are the people I admire. They stand in love, right? So we need to. Why I say the, 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 the culture of admiring people for their look, their wealth, their power, the force they have, the authority they have, does not make any sense. It, it is so, you know, I mean, the only thing we have to look at is when you die, you take none of that with you. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? Mm -hmm. If school, if, if Earth is a school to elevate and learn love, that's the only thing that matters. Mm. Oh, I just resonate so much with what you're saying. And actually, I'd love to share a very brief story about this that happened for me this week. My wife and I this week went to a conference on social justice and philanthropy, and there was a man speaking at a panel who was maybe in his fifties, I think. And he was sharing that, um, you know, he grew up with his dad started a business. They had tons of money and wealth. And when his dad died, he already had money. And then when his dad died, he inherited more. And he started to learn about our system that was set up to support certain people and maybe not set up to support other people. And um, he was so moved when he started to learn this and he realized that he wanted to give away his entire inheritance. Um, and he said that in that process, he learned, which I think this is so beautiful, it really stuck with me. He said, in the process of giving away my inheritance, A, I got freedom. B, I was able to support people that often get looked over. And C, I learned, this is the most powerful part, that I thought money was security. I believed that money was going to make me secure. And what I learned in the process is that what true security is, is love and connection with community. That's what I learned. And it was so powerful to hear someone say that what he learned from this process was that this thing that we think gives us such security actually doesn't. The thing that really gives us security is, is connection and, and love. Yeah, but and let's not be airy fairy. You have to have enough to have a roof over your head. Of course, and yes. Beauty, right. So it's not. Uh, we're not preaching here to go give everything away and go. No. In, in fact, he ended by saying the question is. He learned to shift the question from how much is too much to how much is enough. That's yes. it. It's and, just and, a shift. That is. There is a writer in English. Oh, English that said the sign of a civilized person is the one that knows when they have enough mm. right so the culture of excesses mm. excess everything is is i personally experience it physically it it's a disgust mm. in the face of all the excess right mm. but you one of the signs I know the work of elevation and the spiritual work a person has done is when the main interest in life is to contribute to others. Mm. Right? And it's because then I know this person has freed themselves from the agreement we have created that you need to be richer, smarter, more beautiful, and make it and give a good image of yourself, like as a person that has it all together and can do it on your own. 
Mm. When you drop all that pretense, which is a survival, mm. then all there is left is love. Mm. And it is happening. And you know, Abby, if we go back to the story, like this time where human beings were innocent and loving and they were like children or animals. Um, and the, even the weather was clement and even the, the nature was soft and tender. Mm -hmm. You can see the violence there is in our world. And if we want to end the violence on every single level, we can do it. And it's not by changing laws. It's not by pointing the finger. It's not by making people wrong or right. It's not by fighting war. It's not by defending yourself. It's by loving. Mm. And I do know because I have done it, everybody that listens, right? I have done it. I had money. I gave it away. I have less. I know what it is to have less money. Um, I, I was protected. I was very strong, kind of superwoman. I let go of all my protection. Now I'm somebody that gets moves all the time and cries when I see a, <laughs> a bird with a broken leg. Um, so it is. It is. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to let go mm -hmm. of of the survival. Yeah. But the outcome of it is bliss. Truly, it's but it's not bliss like um, maybe bliss is not the right word. I mean, it is peace, mm. peaceful joy is the best I can describe it. No concern, no worries, and the delight constant, the biggest delight of my life is to make a difference mm. at whatever whatever level and and then the universe feeds you back right so i'm in france i'm at my mother she's having a treatment so i drive her to the hospital and there is no parking and she has an appointment right so my mother is well by the way so there is this ambulance and i go and talk to the driver right and i looked at him i said with no expectation, truly no expectation, I said, would you give me your parking space? Because you're in an ambulance and you can park anywhere you want, but my mom has an appointment and I don't want her to be late. Mm. Do you know the guy couldn't get out of that parking space fast enough? Mm. Now, I'm in France, Abby. It's, it's not the usual. <laughs> Yeah. But even in France, um, I get the best of the French. They, you always reap what you sow. Wow. Right? So, so can you imagine if everybody learns love and, and gets this conversation and the shift, the existential shift to recapture that innocence? <laughs> Maybe we can even disappear the climate crisis. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. so beautiful sophie yeah and it it puts us right in the center we can do something it starts with our family it starts with our partner it starts truly at the smallest level with the animals with people you speak to in the street with people you can spread love like a virus i mean a good virus yeah <laughs> yeah if there is a i mean i don't have another word but you know what i mean you can it's yeah contagious. love is contagious yeah. yeah and you want that yes oh. yeah that's beautiful sophie oh. do you want to look if there is any comments or questions yes yes i will let's see i don't see any comments now um but thank you to those of you that are with us right now that are hanging out with us all right and the last thing i would like to encourage everybody is that you know many many people mock me right when i speak that way because 
it's I sound to them like an innocent not related to reality kind of person right because they're stuck in the in the survival and they don't have enough and scarcity and, mm -hmm. all that. and it's worth it it's worth just being laughed at or mocked or i stand you know i just stand i say no I, i'm not going to be even if i sound like an idiot i am not going to go anywhere else So everybody listening, just stand. Yeah, Be just so stand. loving that people will think there is something wrong with you. Doesn't matter. <laughs> stand. <laughs> I really love that. I really love that. I like that. A movement of just so loving that we seem ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, those are the loving idiots. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. We don't even care. We're ready. Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell the story of how they introduced me in Minorca? Did I share when they said, this is Sophie? I've and heard it, but I don't know who's heard it. You I, share it, because I, I, I have I, no idea where we've said I it. <laughs> it. So I moved to Minorca. I'm not speaking much Spanish. I see mostly Spanish people. So I'm the smiling guest at the dinner parties, and I don't speak too much. But I follow the conversation, and sometimes I can't stand it anymore. And people were criticizing right, wrong, good, bad. This one is uh, guilty, and this one is to blame, and all that. And I finally said, listen, listen, listen. There is no one to blame. There is no right and wrong. I believe every single human being is born innocent and good. Mm -hmm. And it's just later that you lose that innocence. There was an enormous silence around the table. They looked at <laughs> eyes like that, but they're very polite, right? They didn't say anything. But the next day, and it's been now six months, every time <laughs> they introduce me to a new person, they say, this is Sophie. She used to live in New York, and she believes every single person is good. <laughs> <laughs> there That's is no better different. way to be introduced. Just, I know, just go I for it. Know, I know. <laughs> I love every single time it's just... I love that. You know, now now I'm it makes me curious now. For those of you that are listening, could you share underneath like what would your dream introduction be? Like, you know, if someone were to introduce you in the most ridiculous way of just what your values are, <laughs> share with us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you stand for? <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, I mean, it's always great talking to you, darling. It's so good talking to you, Sophie. I love you and everyone oh, we love you. Yeah. yeah. And thank you to everyone that has done the survey. We oh. are looking at it and we are learning from it. And yes. we'll uh, roll out our next seminar soon. And if you haven't done the survey, it takes exactly four minutes. That's what the app says. Yep. So please do it. All right. Yep. Much thank love, everybody. So much. Love you, everyone to you next monday and don't forget to send the questions if you have some abby will put it underneath yeah the, i will the link yeah yeah that's right bye everyone okay.